with Streetcar Week in Oklahoma City. I did get as a chance as a COTPA trustee in my oversight role to ride it a week ago, and it's it's amazing. I mean, it's it's surreal experience to ride, you know, rail transit in downtown Oklahoma City, and so I think people are going to love it. And and eventually that newness factor will weigh off, but it ha it serves a practical use, you know, and it, people don't really understand, I think, yet how it will change the way we experience downtown. You can park anywhere and and still go anywhere downtown. Um, and and then as a, you know, as a, as a, either a resident or as somebody doing business or I mean, working downtown, you'll just, you'll have the opportunity to maybe do things that you otherwise might have not done, you know, I mean, you might not go any farther than you could walk for lunch. You might not have gone to run a dry cleaning or shopping errand that now you might do. Um, you might not, um, you know, meet somebody for coffee uh, in a way or in a place you can now. You know, I mean, it just changes everything, and uh, we'll just kind of be fun to watch and see how that plays out. But yeah, I'm very excited. This has been really about, you know, almost 15 years in the making. The downtown streetcar was envisioned in 2006 with our kind of transit plan that we developed at that time called the Fixed Guideway Study, but it's really just a fancy phrase for a transit plan. And, and I think it was to answer that question of how, uh, what do you do when you arrive downtown? You know, we've still got to circulate people and nobody wants to get in their car at 10th and Walker, drive to Bricktown and park, right? I mean, the ride is three minutes and the parking is 15, you know, so I mean, it's, <laughs> It's one thing to drive from Edmond and park downtown. You kind of, you're, you're, you know, but it, it, people have a, I think there's some sliding scale of tolerance they have for, you know, how long the trip is and how long they're willing to spend parking. So, I mean, people are just not gonna do that. And scooters aren't for everybody. That's a new phenomenon, but I mean, that's not, you know, that's, that's not a, a transit method that is accessible to, to all people. That's, that's generally more of kind of a young person's game. And, um, and so you needed this, you really did. And we tried, you know, people may have short memories. We tried buses downtown, you know, we tried the trolleys. That was what ultimately came out of Maps 1 um, and people didn't use it. But there's just uh, an order of magnitude more buzz about this streetcar that hasn't even opened yet than there ever was about the rubber tired trolleys that we had in Maps 1. And I remind people that Maps 1 was actually a vote on a downtown streetcar and it kind of fell apart and ended up becoming rubber tired trolleys. So uh, it's unique among all of the MAPS projects all time that we've approved it twice. <laughs> the voters really want it. And, and, you know, if anybody complains, I always say, well, you know, that's what the people of Oklahoma City wanted. And in this case, twice. So um, they're getting it, and I think they will use it. And, you know, we, we are charging a fare, and that will, that will help with the operating costs. But really, success for us is, is, is that it feels like it's meeting a need, people like it, it's being used adequately. And that is a bit of a subjective, you know, um, evaluation. And, and it, I think in the beginning, it'll be, you know, pretty popular, and, and what, but in the long term, we'll, we'll just have to see. Um, but I think my ridership expectation is that it will be used enough to merit its existence, you know, and its cost. Um, just as, um, you know, all the roads that we've got around town. I mean, we'll, we'll spend three to four million dollars operating it every year. Right now we're spending eight hundred million dollars resurfacing our streets. So, you know, compared to the money that we spend on streets, which is a car culture, um, it's, it's a very, very, very small amount. Um, but it allows, hopefully, a lot of people to experience the city in the way they want to experience it. People who live here and want to have a more walkable lifestyle and maybe not rely on a car, either at all or at least most of the time, or visitors, um, you know, who want to be able to not have to rent a car and, um, and want to be able to just get around downtown. The fares will be very easy to manage. I mean, there's a fare box at every single platform and there's an app. And, you know, I think if you're a downtown resident or downtown employee, you'll probably just go ahead and buy the annual pass and which, you know, will average out to, you know, a dollar a day and, and you know, depending on how much you use it, less than a dollar a ride, you know. So I, I, think, um, I think the fare um, issue will, will take care of itself. I don't know that anybody ever really expected it to be free. I know there's people who wished it could be free, and we all wish things could be free, but we, we don't offer bus service for free either, and I think there's an equity issue there, you know, um, unless somebody in the private sector would, would will, be willing to sponsor the fares. And, that's a, you know, it's an open question, and we're certainly open-minded about that. Um, but in the meantime, it does have a fare. It's rather affordable. 
And, um, and we hope that's not a discouraging factor in the first few weeks, of course, for everybody to try it. We really do want them to try it first. It's free. During this three-week trial period where it's free, this, it will run on Sundays. Um, and then what's not often reported is there's, a not, there's, there's always been a plan to run it on Sundays when there's an event, whether that be the obvious uh, things, you know, a Thunder Game, Arts Festival, big concert. Um, that's always been in the plans and funded for that to run on Sundays. And so what I think you'll see is we'll, we'll have those first three Sundays as a barometer. Um, we, we're still in conversations about maybe continuing that Sunday bus, that Sunday uh, streetcar service a few more weeks. Um, and we certainly will already be doing it on days that there's major events. And I think we'll figure out what the demand is and we'll meet it. I mean, I, I think it's, it's just inconceivable to me that we're going to have a lot of people wanting to use the streetcar on Sunday and we're just not going to run it. You know, I mean, I think that came out of a theory that, uh, that there would be lesser demand, but we're giving the people of Oklahoma City ample opportunity to prove that theory wrong, and I think they just might. Scooters, it's easy to live in your bubble and think, because I've had those interactions on social media, well, we got the scooters. I'm like, yeah, if you're a 25-year-old dude, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Grandma needs the, needs the street car, you know? And, uh, and so I, they interact to an extent, but only for certain demographics, you know? But yeah, I think it's great. We are thrilled to allow the scooters on the streetcars and your bicycle and whatever. I mean, um, you know, a, a, a fully defined, uh, com, you know, a, a cornucopia of transit options in a city involves multiple things, you know? In, in big cities, you might leave your house in a car, park at a park and ride, you know, get on a train, take the train downtown, get on a scooter or, or a rented bike, take that to your business. I mean, like, that's not uncommon. People might use three or four different modes of, of transit, you know, in a day. And um, that's, that's just something we're discovering like it's, like it's a new experience, but that's rather common in much larger cities. We're just finally arriving there. I would love to drive this streetcar. It really is just a car, you know, and I, I, I mean, a few tips for everybody, you know, because everybody's kind of nervous, you know. I, I, you know, if you, if you see a streetcar behind you or, you're in, or a streetcar's in front of you, don't panic, you know. I mean, it's just a big car. I mean, just treat it like a bus other than don't, don't tempt it because it can't swerve, you know. All it can do is stop and go. But we haven't had any wrecks yet. I'm sure that's inevitable, you know, but cars have wrecks too. Um, but we haven't had one yet, so I mean, I don't think there's any reason to believe they're inherently more dangerous than any other car downtown.